you have norepinephrine norepinephrine will bind with the g protein coupled receptor which is a seven pass receptor also called a serpentine receptor um, after it binds it will activate the g protein complex intracellular domain of the g protein complex and after stimulating that the gdp will go away and gtp will bind with the alpha unit and the beta and the gamma unit will be thrown away after this happens, it will stimulate adenyl cyclase, of which is present in the cell membrane, which will convert ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP being the second messenger, will it will activate protein kinase A. Okay, remember CAMP protein kinase A because we'll be learning about different protein kinases: protein kinase C, protein kinase uh, G. So this is protein kinase A, and it will phosphorylate the calcium channels so that more calcium comes. And this calcium will stimulate sarcoplasmic reticulum to release more calcium. This is called as calcium induced calcium release. This calcium will now bind with troponin C, which will result in unmasking. It will pull out the tropomyosin, which will result in unmasking for the binding site for the actin and myosin. And now the actin and myosin can come together and will lead to muscle contraction. Is everybody clear up till now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So we started with your girlfriend calling. I know I'm no longer interested in you. And norepinephrine was released and tachycardia. Okay. Palpitation. This is the molecular mechanism. Now, let's say unfortunate patient was having trouble with the wife, and the girlfriend also called that, oh, now I am no longer interested. So let's. The double problem and the third problem was the patient was already on digoxin. What digoxin does is you have to take care of this calcium, okay? At some point, the extracellular calcium has to go back in. So extracellular calcium either go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum or it has to be sent outside of the cell with the help of this calcium sodium antiport. Okay, this calcium sodium antiport. And there is one sodium potassium ATPase which can send the sodium outside and the potassium inside. Let's say you are blocking sodium potassium ATPase with your drug that's digoxin. Digoxin, what's the mechanism of action of digoxin? It is going to block sodium potassium ATPase. That's your first question. What it will do? If you block sodium potassium ATPase, what will be the level of sodium inside the cell? Increased. Very good. So, is everybody okay? If you're blocking, blocking the sodium potassium ATPase, the sodium levels will be increased inside the cell. If you have increased level of sodium inside the cell because you no longer can dump out this, dump outside the sodium, do you think this sodium will be happy to come inside? No. No. Okay, it's like already other wife with some other husband. Why would other wife come? <laughs> I'm so sorry if I, for giving these kind of examples, okay? So this, this sodium will not come inside. And if the sodium will not come inside, of course, this potassium, uh, this calcium cannot go outside, okay? If this calcium cannot go outside, this calcium will build up here and it will further bring the mom away so that actin myosin can contract. And that will result in positive ionotropy. Okay, what is positive inotropy? It's like increased cardiac contractility. Okay, that's positive inotropy. So this is the exact mechanism of action of digoxin. Is everybody clear up till now? Is everyone okay? Yes. Perfect. That's positive inotropy. Now the thing was, if you are already predisposed to tachycardia, and if you get some get some news now this patient can have malignant tachyarrhythmias okay so this patient can have atrial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias and digoxin also does one wonderful thing by activating parasympathetic nervous system as a result of that you can have sa and av nodal block so it's it's like a double edged sword it can does atrial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias atrial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias by increasing calcium level inside the muscles of the heart but it can also increase parasympathetic nervous system activation and cause av nodal block so if you find a patient with atrial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias with heart blocks it is digoxin toxicity until unless proven otherwise okay 
these are golden words by cardiologist if you find somebody with atrial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias with heart blocks second or third degree it is digoxin toxicity unless until proven otherwise you have to give the patient dg bind okay that's antibodies against the digoxin to uh, does it reverse the process huh does it reverse the process slowly of course yes because that's what we want the dg bind to do because dg bind will bind with the digoxin and until the half life of the digoxin and all the digoxins are bounded you might have to manage the arrhythmias with the other drugs so that's the treatment for dg digox dg i mean digoxin toxicity the other thing is it can also cause some color blind not color blind but yellow tint in vision this is how they'll ask in the question stem okay patient was already having heart failure and now he is complaining of yellow tint in color vision and um, having tachyarrhythmia of the atria and the ventricle with heart blocks it's digoxin toxicity all right i think that's about sodium potassium atps they won't go a bit longer 